Hi pals, it's me, Artie, they, them pronouns only. It is suddenly so fucking hot. It's been shitty, windy ass weather for so long. 27 degrees suddenly is like really a surprise. I was not prepared mentally or physically. My video this week is just gonna be talking about my back because I've had some issues with my back. <laughs> Pretty much for as long as I can fucking remember. But also I found out something very interesting about an old MRI. This kind of pissed me off, <laughs> to be honest. So I'm gonna take you through the history of Artie's back problems. <laughs> yeah, I have a long history of back problems. Up and down my spine, all over the fucking place. You know, for, for so long now, I have been having fun coat hanger pain in the upper half. I have that like, mid back pain and I've had all sorts of like lower back, bottom of back pain problems, etc. <sighs> and like nobody gives a fuck. Nobody nobody fucking cares. <laughs> I used to struggle with uh, a lot of lower back spasms, which prevented me from moving much and like really gave me that stereotypical like granny holding her back with a cane, like, oh my back whilst trying to do anything. <laughs> Because any movement triggered it, so you were just sort of there holding your back like, please, just don't, don't do that. And I think in uni, roughly in like 2016, 2017, see, I saw a new osteopath when I was in uni in like my second year, I think, um, and they did x-rays for new patients, and they conveniently caught a fracture <laughs> on like, my last or like second to last vertebrae vertebra i don't know which one i'm supposed to say but like by the time i got it re-x-rayed by the nhs um it had already healed and gone but like i i would say i don't have a clue how i ended up with a fractured spine <laughs> and didn't notice like i didn't remember an incident that could have caused it but also i don't recall any like new symptoms so i think the problem was i'm always in so much pain i just didn't realize if i had h hurt myself in other ways <laughs> more acutely just didn't notice a difference and like yeah because i'm hypermobile i've always had like a very hypermobile spine i would regularly do like back bends like halsey does or used to do on tour with like no issue and can still do it but like I try not to do things like that because that's <sighs> how I have injured myself in the past is overextension of things getting stuck in positions or f falling you know whatever and yeah because of my lower back issues anyway it is harder to do the back bends but I remember when I was first like really assessed for hypermobility she asked me to do a back bend and I back bended so far I freaked out the physio. <laughs> I've also had just bad posture my whole life. <laughs> I grew up as one of the taller kids um, so I always wanted to hide but also like when your body is just made of fucking rubber, <laughs> made of jelly, you just kind of melt into positions or seats when you're not like supported properly. So I've gotten very used to shrimp mode. I think I'm not alone in that, obviously. It's just more difficult to combat when you're hypermobile and also more common for that to be a thing among hypermobile people and autistic people, probably because autistic people are more likely to be hypermobile than non-autistic people. But like, a lot of the time I'm on my phone or my laptop or watching TV or something is like I'm usually laying down. <laughs> I do try my best to like keep myself fully supported and practicing better uh, posture. Like if I am sat on the sofas to watch TV, I try to remember to keep my, like to, you know, using the furniture to like help me practice better posture like le leaning into the sofa <laughs> to practice where like my 
chin and neck and whatever should be more aligned in that way. And yeah, just generally having the space to adjust positions and practicing the posture. It's not easy, especially when a lot of, you know, staying still or certain positions just really hurt regardless of, um, cause like proper posture hurts in other places for me, not just like the, you know, back and neck. It's because I can't just remain in the same position. And also like, I I think this is the POTS thing, but I'm not entirely sure or the autonomia thing, is that I, I struggle even sitting upright for long periods of time. If my feet are down, I get a lot of blood pooling um, and my like legs and feet just don't feel right. Um, which is another reason why I'm more likely to be laying down or like, reclined rather than sat upright properly because yeah just like my legs and my feet just don't feel good <laughs> and that's why i hate normal chairs a lot of the time and i'm always sat in a weird position um i also had a very typical like experience of sciatica when i was at uni roughly in like the same sort of time like 2017 18 like in my last year that would go down my right leg but more recently I've been having this lower back pain like right across all of like my lower back it just like aches like deeply aches because it's so like broad I genuinely thought it was a hip pain because it kind of comes all the way round and it's often associated with when my hips are in certain positions, not when my back's in a certain position. Like it gets worse from, I, I, see here is my point I literally just made. Um, this lower back pain gets worse from sitting in chairs, um, having my legs in sort of like a right angle position from my hips, whatever. I don't know how to exactly describe that properly. Um, which I have talked about, I'm pretty sure, or like mentioned in different videos. Um, or like, yeah, cross-legged on the floor or anything, like anything where my legs are like, yeah, 90 degrees or higher towards my body. I flagged the back pain a few months into feeling it. Um, that's when she was like, well, it's probably not hip pain. To my rheumatologist, which was like two or more years ago at this point, she brushed me off i can't even remember the specific kind of brush off i got besides like definitely the it's not hip pain it'll be your lower back and just probably something along the lines of exercise more take more of whatever meds you're on currently which didn't work um, sleep better to improve pain and exercise to improve your pain. So yeah, without actually giving me anything or doing anything to help. And yeah, it was the amitriptyline. She was like, just take more of that. And it's like, I tried and it doesn't do anything. <laughs> and then yeah, I eventually stopped taking the amitriptyline anyway. Um, I flagged the lower back pain in pain management six months-ish later and was given my pregabalin back in such a small dose. I don't know if it actually did anything. I still don't know if it's actually doing anything. Now I'm on a slightly higher dose. I don't know whether I should try upping the dose or honestly just throw it in the bin at this point. And then, yeah, I was also referred on to the doctors of the pain management service who do diagnostic injections and can do nerve ablation if necessary because even though i've been told by somebody else on the team that they will not see me because of my fibromyalgia the other lady who's sort of in charge of the whole thing and knows who works where was like no you're a candidate go see them and then i did see him in like february or march or something i think march because it was meant to be in february but then they were like no we don't have any appointments Bye. So I think it was probably March of like earlier this year and it was all just to tell me they can't slash won't help me because of my file. Everything on my file was enough to decide they're not going to do anything. They said that the injections they would use for like a nerve block have steroids in which I didn't really want anyway but they said because steroids didn't help me which I did not say to them. I don't know where he got that from. And I actually said the opposite, that it's coming off of steroids. I'm getting a lot of the pain back. <laughs> so the steroids were helping. 
and then yeah the usual spiel that I've been saying is that because I've been on such a high dose of steroids so many times the steroids for such a long time it's fucked all of my other pain meds that I was on that were helping um and then yeah he once again brought up the fibro as if no one else has or will ever have a flare-up after having a needle jabbed into their spine unless they have fibro like that's a pretty intense injection if you ask me i think probably a lot of people flare up after having a needle jabbed into their spine or like like not into their spine but you know like around or near that area or possibly in the spine i don't know that's the thing they didn't really talk to me about it because they decided i was not I was not worthy <laughs> so yeah once again fibromyalgia diagnosis prevented me from accessing any kind of care I ended up bringing up the pain to my gastro who I think I made a video about this to be fair when it sort of happened um the you know when I mentioned this lower back pain because as well I was getting a lot of pain during and around sort of like going to the toilet too and I, I think I still do but I don't know at this point I'm just like am I even in my body I don't know and he basically he was just like yeah we'll send you for a repeat MRI because we haven't checked on your fistula in a while and we'll just also cover a little bit higher up to check if you've got sacroiliitis which is common among Crohn's patients and something that that fucker from the pain management team mentioned could be Crohn's it wasn't <laughs> but like at least he was the one fucking guy to do anything that was the fourth person I'd spoken to nobody else even was like yeah we'll do a repeat MRI and see what's going on like nobody said that or said yeah I'll contact this person for you and actually It might have been the fifth actually I'm trying to like thinking about it i think i also spoke to yeah i did i spoke to a gp as well so like i've spoken to five different like medical professionals including and pain management nurse before the pain management doctor where yeah i said to her like i have this really awful lower back pain that nobody will do anything about and she was like i would just send you to rheumatology and i was like so you're not gonna like even look at it or anything and we like argued for a while because <laughs> it was stupid um and she was like oh i can write a letter to your rheumatologist because i had said to her i was like yeah my rheumatologist doesn't give a shit she doesn't want to do anything she's ignored me about this numerous times and is not interested so please don't say that in your letter to her however i've tried bringing it up to my rheumatologist um and yeah i remember she sent that fucking thing and like my movement I just never fucking brought it up. So I'd seen five, five medical professionals about my lower back and nobody did shit until I spoke to my fucking gastro who just went, yeah, we'll do an MRI. And if anyone had listened to each other, we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, it took five different medical professionals before someone ran any kind of diagnostic anything nobody did any physical examinations on me the pain management nurse just asked me to like stand up and show her where the pain is and that was it nobody did shit the gastro was like let's do an mri thank you for at least paying enough attention to give a shit and then yeah i was recently given results from an mri i had in 2019 that i'm pretty sure was requested by a rheumatologist i saw in the area near my uni i don't think i was under a rheumatologist in like my home area at, like, yet i left uni obviously sort of like end of august and then i still had like ongoing like care and investigations with a rheumatologist there so there was overlap between me being back here at home and like this doctor from elsewhere seeing me doing tests, doing scans and that sort of thing. Which my rheumatologist can see with no fucking problem. If you've seen the cardiology video, which yes, I just filmed because I'm wearing the exact same shirt as that small clip I added to that video. 
They couldn't access a bunch of scans, even ones requested from within the trust. Whereas she seems like this rheumatologist could see this MRI of my lower back. Just fine. She even showed me. She showed me the scan. But she, she sort of just, uh, I brought up the lower back pain. I was like, right, I have nothing else going on at the moment besides the tapering of steroids. So let's try again with this lower back bullshit because it is also in like this weird sciatica, not sciatica limbo right now. Um, and she was like, oh, well you have some bulging discs, don't you? Do I? What do you mean? And she was like, oh, I'm sure I saw something. Maybe it was somebody else. Scrolled all the way back to 2019. And like, I don't remember, I don't remember getting these results. I may have done, it was 2019. That was five years ago. But I don't remember getting this information. And nobody else has mentioned this since. Like nobody else has mentioned any of this since. Nobody's gone, oh yeah, that scan you had in 2019 would make sense. Let's do a repeat MRI. No, nobody said any of that. So I had an MRI for sacroiliac possibility, the fuck, thanks to my gastro, but that didn't quite go as high as where this MRI showed fucking problems. <laughs> like literally it's just below the problem area. But yeah, she showed me and she said it shows signs of wear and tear and sl some uh, slightly bulging discs. Now, I don't even really know what that means. I'm not gonna lie. I have not looked into it. I just, I'm not well. <laughs> I am not well. But yeah, because I said that I've got this sort of nervy pain that's like sciatica, but it doesn't go all the way down my leg. Um, she was like, oh yeah, I remember saying something about that. So yeah, she talked through this fucking scam um, and she said it was normal wear and tear as we age. I was 24. I was 24 when I had that fucking scan done. What do you mean normal wear and tear with age? I think you mean normal wear and tear with age when you're hypermobile, probably, to be more precisely accurate. <laughs> like normal wear and tear. Yeah, every 24 year old has got bulging discs and wear and tear on their fucking spine this is this is a five-year-old scan and then yeah there was the slight bulging discs like a couple of them and apparently that could cause nerve pain like i'm having and her advice this time was use cocodamol for the pain and in time it will get better this is a five-year-old scan She's basing this advice off of a five-year-old scan and me saying my lower back hurts and it's nervy, nerve-related. She also did not look at my back. If it was going to improve, it would have improved. Like, why would that be causing me pain now? She was basically saying that it will get better, it will, like, heal itself or what the fuck ever. It will, it will get better by, by itself. Like, it's been five fucking years. And I haven't had this pain for the entire five years. But I have been having this lower back pain for like a year and a half, two years. That you ignored the first time I mentioned it. Like either it's, it, it did improve and something else has happened or it just never improved and the steroids were masking a few of those years, which is also very possible. But you know, nobody seems to ever actually talk about the, those different possibilities like you don't necessarily have to tell me which one of them is correct but just acknowledging that those are the possibilities would be good because this doesn't make any sense and yeah like this specific part of my back has not had any kind of repeat imaging since that MRI in 2019 so like who knows what's going on with it right now you know like yeah it has gotten better symptom wise but that's because I don't sit more reasons why i i lay i lay down um and i've also had to become a bit more of a stander even though i'm also i have like a, a an, an amount of orthostatic intolerance so 
Styling is also just generally not great. <laughs> Like, my, my rheumatologist has said that um, she is retiring soon. So I may just add this to like my list to bring up to the next person I see, along with uh, reassessing fully for EDS and going for genetic testing for like the rarer types of EDS. Cause yeah, Jesus, like things are not right. And I just don't, I don't, I don't trust anyone at the moment. I don't really trust anyone in the medical field right now. And like, prefacing, I understand why people are against chiropractors. I, I do understand. However, something else you also have to understand is that there is really a very limited selection of options of what you can do when you are in pain in the UK. I have gone through all of the med options through my GP. Um, I've literally made a video basically reviewing, comparing my personal experiences of each one, besides one at the time, but like I've now been on that and it didn't like, we have, we have. I have been to physio thousands of times and it's literally always pointless. I'm still waiting on the hydrotherapy. I was told I was referred to by the last physio I saw sometime in maybe January, maybe even earlier. So like, and I have done hydrotherapy before. I was fucking body shamed by the woman there. And I was much slimmer than I am currently. Like, <laughs> I've been to pain management like three or four times. I've tried the mindfulness. I've tried the CBT and gaslighting away my pain you know those are basically all of the options on the nhs unless you're like an older white man where they get more options like patches and actually the injections <laughs> and stuff that i was denied like i hadn't even decided if i wanted to do those injections i was just there to hear him out about them and decide based on what he was telling me um, but actually, I was just told to go fuck myself. So like, those are those are the options on the NHS, <laughs> and they suck. The options not on the NHS are expensive. Often, you're not really sure what or if it will work. I recently did acupuncture, which I'm not sure did a lot. I've tried acupuncture numerous times as well. Generally, I see a massage therapist. Like, I try to go once a month. I have seen private physios, which are a bit different. Like I said, I've seen osteopaths. I, like I've seen everybody. If I could find like a decent osteopath nearer me, then I'd probably see an osteopath more regularly, but I haven't been able to um, since the like one dude that we liked moved to fucking Wales. <laughs> we have not found a replacement yet. So, but like I have been seeing this chiropractor for years, on and off for years. Um, so he knows my body and my health pretty well. He is pretty like up to date with uh, hypermobile stuff. There's also generally just contention about whether you should be loosening up joints in hypermobile people. And it's like, yeah, but that's, that's not really it. Like <laughs> when you're hypermobile, your body tightens up the wrong places to compensate for the muscles and ligaments it's not able to use properly. So, and you bitches know I've tried yoga. Also, it's honestly a little bit too boring for me. It's not, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, I was gonna say it's too slow paced for me mentally, but also I wouldn't wanna be doing it faster. I just, I don't know, yoga is not hitting with me anymore. So the point I was trying to make before making a huge disclaimer, I understand why people are against chiropractors, why people call them quacks. Sometimes my chiro does say some weird things, but I just ignore him. <laughs> but like the actual physically like therapeutic aspect usually helps with a lot of my pain but also he does actually give advice on stretching and exercise as well whereas a lot of other people just fucking they just go just go do something just go exercise more you'll fat go exercise more and you're like well i don't really know what 
is wrong that I'm supposed to be exercising for. All I know is it hurts. You haven't told me anything else. So I told my chiropractor about this mysteriously found MRI from 2019 um, and the nervy pain. And like he suggested specifically strengthening my lower back and my lower core, which nobody has ever said. <laughs> nobody has said that to me. Um, I've also been injured in physio in the NHS in the past. So I'm always a little bit, always a little bit skeptical. Um, I don't think any of them know shit about hypermobility. Um, but like, yeah, he at least had specific suggestions um, and he listed a few things like exercise wise that would help. I can't remember what exactly he said. I remember yoga and Pilates was on the list. I haven't done yoga in like a year, as you guys know, cause I just can't find one at the right time, affordable, preferably online. But honestly, even like somewhere local that I could go, that's easy to get to, can't find it, babe. <laughs> But I have been looking into reformer reformer Pilates because it's it's definitely been more of like a trend online, even though it's been going, you know, it's been a thing for a long time. So I have had my first class of that. However, I don't I I think I'll make a video in the future, but I want to try it a few times first before I really feed back on that. So yeah, I mentioned to him that I was gonna be doing a reformer Pilates class and I books like an introductory session because like i i hate floor pilates i've tried it before but again it's back to that like when your body's made of fucking rubber i know people say you should be doing it when you are hypermobile but i just don't know how you would do pilates from my own experience anyway like obviously it's clearly helped people and people have done it without the kind of issues i've had but for me I don't understand how people can do Pilates on the floor and actually hold themselves in the correct positions and not like either further worsen bad habits of using the wrong muscles or worsen like injuries or whatever else because I just can't hold myself in the positions that they expected you to be able to hold yourself in in a Pilates class. And I've generally heard that like reformer machines can help with that issue and like support you, but also actually kind of make your body use the correct muscles as you're doing the exercises. Because like part of it is you're not using like all of your energy and brain power to try and hold yourself in the right position because you're being supported in it already. So like, yeah, there's less worry about injuring yourself and more of an actual focus on like, oh yeah, I'm using the correct muscles here. and I'm trying to do the exercise on the machine correctly, it, whatever. I've lost my train of thought. And yeah, generally just not worrying that you're gonna injure yourself because your posture's wrong, because the machine's literally there to remove that as an issue. I've done my first session. I have my second one booked. Um, I'm doing quite large gaps in between. Um, but also like after seeing my chiropractor that time, the first time in like a while as well, I've just not been able to like find the time to have any sessions with him. And my back pain and stuff has gotten so bad. I was like, I need to make time. After the first session, the fucking nerve pain went away. And I usually find that the chiropractor helps keep my migraines at bay as well, which is why I think my migraines are, are related to stress, as in like emotional stress, but also physical stress um, and not great posture. So whilst I, yeah, I understand and I've read some of the stuff that backs up why you shouldn't use or shouldn't see a chiropractor. Unfortunately, it's the only fucking thing that seems to help. It's the only thing that seems to help. Literally also as well, I. You guys know I'm on medical cannabis too, which is so fucking expensive and doesn't really do much. <laughs> um, I might be making another video soon on that too. And I'm just like not find like, I'm just not finding a lot of stuff actually helping my pain, like generally, but especially enough at night to get to sleep. And that's another thing too. People are like, oh, you shouldn't have cannabis because it doesn't help with your sleep, but it helps me get to sleep and stay asleep, bro. It helps me not be in so much pain that I can't go to sleep, bro. So yeah, that's the video about my back pain. That's like mainly my lower back, but there's not really a lot else to tell, I don't think. I'm skeptical about the research 
that is all like, oh, you need to strengthen your muscles to help with hypermobile pain and blah, 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 because I don't necessarily think that's true. And it's used as a way of like, of like preventing people from accessing mobility aids. Like it was basically almost used to prevent me from getting finger splints. They were really gonna make me just do hand physio. <laughs> Did you know we don't have muscles in our fingers? We only have tendons in our fingers. So like, does exercise improve the tendons? Cause the, like the way it was told to me is that it, it was still the strengthening the muscles in my hands and fingers. I know there's some muscles in my hands, but I learned not too long ago, there aren't any muscles in my fingers. So what am I physioing with hand physio? I don't really understand. If anyone actually knows, please tell me, please link me, because I could not find the answer and I haven't seen that lady since. I have thought about seeing her though because I have been finding it hard to get the handbrake on and off in my car. So I just don't use the main handbrake anymore. I just, because it's an automatic, you put it into park. So you don't necessarily have to use the handbrake. Oh yeah, you know, in Scotland, they were actually doing a, uh, a survey to see how many hypermobile people there are there and how many of them would want an EDS and hypermobility clinic to be opened up there to support specifically hypermobile people. And they were like, oh, too many people want help. We can't do that. So we're not going to bother. We're not going to open the clinic actually um, and I feel like they would have said the same thing if not enough people responded they'd be like oh there's not enough people here to help so there's no need for us to even open up the thing because it's just a few of you there is like no support for hypermobile conditions on the NHS anymore not that there really ever has been but like even now because I've been diagnosed since uh, I think 2013 so a bit over 10 years. And like when I was first diagnosed, I at least had, well, one, I had immediate access. To, I, I, who diagnosed me? I can't remember. I think I was diagnosed by a rheumatologist, but I don't really remember. But I went to the physios at one of the local hospitals and um, they put me basically on a self-led program where I could come in, I think once or twice a week to use their gym equipment for free to do my physio exercises. All I had to do was basically pay for the parking at the hospital. And at the time, at that hospital in particular, it's only like two pounds for like up to two hours or something like that. Way more useful than an actual gym membership. <laughs> like we need someone to open like a disabled gym or something in that works in a similar way that all you have to really do is like pay a small fee as and when you come and use it because trying to pay like what 40 40 quid a month for, for like a traditional gym membership when you're probably not going to be going anywhere near enough to be worth 40 quid a fucking month most of them also don't do discounts if you are disabled and can prove it and if they do the discounts are bull bullshit but yeah now if you're referred from a GP to a rheumatologist for hypermobility, anything, you just get immediately discharged. They don't want you. Uh, now diagnosing is done or can be done purely by GPs. There's a GP toolkit on like, I can't remember which website it is. One of the hypermobility charity websites. And like, again, it's one of them postcode lottery kind of things. So it depends on who you get doctors wise but also where you live and what kind of services are available um, and also if you know enough things i only knew about this particular hand lady because i went with my grand to her hand appointments for arthritis and she talked about uh dr jessica eccles who is like the hypermobility and neurodivergent like researcher of the uk basically she was in the sam Sam what's it called documentary on ADHD like I only knew about that from complete luck and then yeah some places you just get luckier with um people who have a more of a special interest in that area or see this is the thing I don't know if it's 
uh, OTs or, or orthotics, I, either of those two, like I feel like, I feel like both of these roles are basically conflated together and neither of them are what people think they are. But whoever it is that provides things like knee braces or compression garments, like things that are specifically fitted for you um, on the NHS, like a lot of places, like I've never been referred to anyone besides the hand person for that. I've never seen somebody for that purpose. The one OT I spoke to had no idea what the fuck she was talking about, <laughs> which I think I talked about in a video as well once. Whereas I do have a friend in sort of, I think it's the Midlands technically, who has been able to get more of these sorts of things to support her hypermobile joints. Yeah, like they just don't give a fuck. <laughs> Even though they're realizing that either HEDS or generally hypermobility, hypermobility syndrome is a lot more common than they thought it was. And they're just like, you know what? Can't we ask, mate? Can't we ask, mate? Clearly it's not taught properly in any curriculum because most physios also don't know shit. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. This was just a video telling you a bit about my back problems, a little bit about being hypermobile, but also just the fact that suddenly people just fucking remember a really old scan you had and how that's probably relevant to why you're in so much fucking pain. And you're like, why? Why have you just remembered that now? Were you reading through my file or something recently? I don't... Because you've never mentioned it in the several years that I have been your patient. Because I've been her patient for four years now. You know, like, I, I really need somebody to just give me, like, the NHS system and let me tell you how to fix it because the recent cardiology video absolute bullshit and like basically any of my videos about my healthcare a lot of the times there's something to do with just how the system that they have to use is useless and unhelpful and not streamlined clearly it's just not good enough i'm so fucking tired why do I have to be the one who remembers all of the exact things all the time? You're the doctor, you're the one with all of this literally in front of you right now. So yeah, anyway, uh, thanks for watching my video. <laughs> it is so hot, so I'm gonna go back to doing nothing for the rest of my day. That's it really, I have nothing else to say. Um, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, watch my videos because of watch time, blah, blah, blah. Help me become partner, support the channel. Make sure you keep up to date with my videos. And if it's something you're not you know, that interested in, you can just play it in the background on mute. Yeah, that's my video for this week and I'll see you next week. Bye.